Oh, hey, Turbs. Thanks for coming over and saying hi. How you doing, baby? He's been so sleepy. He's passed out on the ground for like an hour or two. I think he's gotten up and wandered around kind of like this. Everybody's gonna go clock. Wait, where are you going? I thought we were having glider time, Toby. Why are you leaving? Now you're coming back. What do you want to do? You want to come up? You coming up? I'd like to get a drink first if you don't mind. I'm kind of thirsty. Maybe a nice iced tea or just water. Maybe, probably just water. I don't have tea. What's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm I'm great. I'm sitting. It's, it's very windy. I have a bit of a wind burn going on from it. Very windy and very polleny. All of the redness. So much pollen. And the hair. I actually tried to do something with the hair today because I knew I was going to have the camera out, but it came through and completely screw it. Forecast supposed to be very windy. I was thinking this would be a great time to head out to the greenhouse, to Weathop Greenhouse. They have tons of great annuals there, pretty good prices. It's just, it's always fun going there. Really pretty crowded, so don't know how much I'll be able to film there, but going to try my best and hopefully the weather will turn around and be able to get some stuff done out here. It's actually, it's great weather for doing yard work, but not for having the camera out about with the wind. Been out here for a good 20 minutes, waiting for the breeze to die down so I could film just this intro right here. Surprise, it's less this long. Maybe things will be better. I don't think they're going to, though. It's not according to the weather. So, let's go buy some plants and then maybe get some stuff planted in a day or so when things get nicer outside. And that's it. Nothing else planned. Just buying plants and doing some gardening. Oh, umbrella coming in the mail. That one's broken. It's just a spare I keep up in the attic for when the umbrellas that I like to have out here break, which is very frequently. And it's a new color. This probably isn't very exciting to anybody else, but it's a different color. It's called like hot papaya or flaming mango or something like that. It's a really bright, vibrant orange. I was like, well, may as well mix it up because I've had the blue for years, tried the green. That didn't work out. Now let's try an orange. It'll probably only last a week and then we can try another color. Just keep trying out different color umbrellas. Right, that's enough. Thank you for being patient with me while the ADD ran its course and did its thing. Head out to the nursery and grab some plants. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I'm very happy. I already have something on the cart. This place is jam-packed, and I don't know how I'm going to film in here without having a lot of people on camera, and I feel really bad doing that. I don't like to have a lot of people in the background. Hello, how are you guys doing? Nice and full kangaroo paw ferns. Not $40, nope. Already have a whole bunch of those, don't need them. Nice looking arbifolias back there. Some lime lights that are looking a little bit crispy, but they're, they'll be okay. Fast growers, look at the size of these hanging baskets. And those dragon's wing begonias are gigantic. I have to remember to grab some of those. The petunias, those are looking great too. Some nice, philodendrons down there looking good right nice like those beautiful that that's beautiful okay if there are people behind me it feels weird filming when people are watching me i like those begonias though those are pretty nice bananas i'm right next to it i can't help it sorry about the noise cyan ruby bananas looking nice not one of my favorites i don't really understand the hype with them when they get going the shade of red to me just that look kind of burnt. Look at the cerions. These are stunning. I'm really glad that I spent all that time nurturing that tiny little one in my garage, hoping to grow it out for this year when I could. How much are these? Longiloba, by the way, not cerion. You guys don't have a. Where's your price? No idea. Don't see anything on those. Twenty-five dollars. Oh. Yeah, that's a great price. I'm gonna need multiple carts. Carts here are never big enough for me. I always need bigger carts. Okay, it's $25 a piece, so how many should I get? Oh, look at the teacup. I love the teacup too. Oh, and look at the mojitos. I know some of y'all love these. I'm showing them. Not one of my favorites. I think they look dirty. This one they're bigger like this. I kind of get it, sort of. Hey, Nancy. That's a cool one. More to the Waikiki, but it takes longer to show its variegation. I'm getting very distracted here. It's hard to focus on one thing at a time. Had to pop into another aisle. It was getting crowded in the one I was in. They have the electric orange sun patience. The vigorous tropical orange. That's right. Bigger flowers on these. That's going to look really pretty when that gets going. Wonder how much? No idea. Why is there a core phytum in the middle? 
That's not that's not a centerpiece. It needs to go over the side. I'm wondering how how am I going to do this? Already out of room here. Probably gonna have to make multiple trips, which I think I already said. Well, look at that basket. That is a gigantic. Holy freaking crap! That's a freaking monster. Can I can I have that? I really want it. Don't know where I'd put it. I'm also really digging these geraniums too. These are stunning. Look at the size of them. I don't think I have the sun for them. They never end up doing great because I don't have the light, but oh, I'd love to try them. There's some more of them. What is it? Top hat pink. I'm guessing those are probably top hat white. That's what these begonias are with these big open flowers on them. I like those. $25 like them, but they have them in some smaller containers. I'd probably grab some of those. What's the one? Do you have a name where they have the white and the pink? Any of? Okay, here's a tag. Top hat rose bicolor. I think that one's my favorite. I like those a lot. I might $25 like those. I have to think about it. Look at them. You'll see that. Let's put my finger over the people so I don't have to edit them out later. Look at, look at, there's so many fun plants. All the sun impatience. In larger sizes, they have them in the baskets. I don't know how much the ones in the baskets are. I'm not seeing prices on these white baskets. It's probably right in front of me, but there's just, there's so much to see. I need to just, I need to get what I need, which is a whole bunch of pink and orange. I'm not seeing much orange. Might have a problem there. I don't know what color that is on these geraniums, but my brain cannot compute it. It's uh, the orange? I don't know. Whatever they are, it's very vibrant and beautiful. It's like actually too much. It's sort of hurting my eyes. Okay, having a dilemma here. I don't, one is that the card is full, so can't put anything else on here. Also, the compact hot pink and the orange, usually what I do, but these, they look more pink on camera. The color isn't quite right on them, which sometimes just happens in a greenhouse, but I'm not loving the way those are going together. Although these are colored out in the way they're supposed to look, and I like those better. So I think that it's just a matter of giving them some time to flush out with their proper colors. That would probably be the right thing to do. But I also, I found another one that I'm just in love with. These are new, and they're just awesome. Look at that compact purple candy. They got stripes on them. That might pair nice with the orange, but there's a big, big size difference. And what I'm going to do here. Okay. All right. Trip one complete. I'm going back in for more. This is, there's still more. Figured the solution to my problem of not having enough space on the cart. Get it up the cart. That's fine. Split things up that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Making progress. Yes, there is another Angeloba on the cart. Figure I probably need two if I want them to border something. I was hoping to find a pink dragon's wing in one of these larger pots, but I've only been seeing red so far. Yeah, red, just a faded red. That's too bad. Also, these top hat begonias, I'm loving them, but I also found these, which are similar but different. I don't remember what's the difference. This is top hat rose by color, and this is top hat that color. Look, they're different, right? I think. Uh, okay, no. No, they're not different. Well, they look different. What am I going to end up with here? I don't know. Look at all these great topiaries, too. Topiaries. You know, it's the metal thing with a planter on top. They look nice, though. Pulling it off. Those are pretty awesome. Coleus and bigger pots. I'm wondering if I should maybe grab a geranium because, I mean, just come on. They're fantastic. They also have lots of zinnias, button flowers, I've seen set cressias, all kinds of, I mean, you name it, they've got it. It's everything. Oh, and the Persian shields. Should I grab some of those too? Huh. Should probably just grab a couple just to be safe. I may not see them somewhere else. Okay, now it's probably time to go. The cart is officially full again, but I'm still, I'm only about a third of the way through this place. Maybe have to might make another trip, which is fine. Like with the geraniums, I decided I should hold off because I need to um, to figure. These are neat. Look at those. Are these those trailing toms? Is that what they're called? You have a tag. Cherry Cascade. That's what the little one says. Are you a Cherry Cascade too? I'd like to know. Oh my god, that's so freaking cute. I don't. Does it taste good? 
I like that they have them pre-started because I could just toss them over the edge of some containers and have trailing tomatoes coming out with the annuals. What a great idea. That's something I should definitely, definitely do. This is a good one. Look at that. All those flowers on there. That's a good one. <laughs> I think it's going to take me a minute to unload everything. And then, do we need to do a plant haul? I mean, you saw most of what I got when I was, at, well, of course, what am I talking about? I have to do a plant haul, maybe explain some of the logic behind what happened here. I didn't get anything that I didn't need. All right, that might be a stretch. Uh, the ginger, that was a nice surprise. The big, we'll talk about it. It's going to take me a long time to get all this out of the car. I need to get to work. I know I missed you too, Turbo. Was gone all morning out doing stuff for the house and then the guy it's a couple days later new umbrellas here i think calling that anything other than orange is inaccurate that's just that's just orange and i'm fine with it it'll be broken in a week or two so who cares and i don't hate it anyways it goes fine with the blue on the cushion you can't see that that's under my butt that the blue on the cushions i like it maybe not everybody's cup of tea but i like the blue and orange go together hey look at all the all the new plants those are from lowe's stopped by there to get some potting mix yesterday look at there's so many this isn't everything it's most of it but not all of it if you watch the garden tour then you already saw the dragon's wing begonias they are absolutely massive some sun damage on them so it's a good thing i got the new umbrella because there really just isn't much shade out here i thought i had them tucked back far enough but not quite far enough so they're a little crispy but that's all right they'll be okay this, from right here to the other side that's probably a good 36 to maybe 40 inches. I feel like that's longer than three feet from side to side. These are very big established plants. So I grabbed two of those. I always love grabbing a couple of dragon wings, begonias from them. I was just thinking to myself, it's so rare that Turbo's out here and he's dry. That didn't last long. He's stopping wet. That's not going to be good. I think I have to sit on the ground to do this, a lot of this just to get the right camera angles and now he's uh yeah. might need to towel him off i don't want to do all this sit from the chair not going to get a very good view of things for the most part though I mean, you can see what's over here and i'm pretty sure everybody was able to see what was going on at the nursery hey baby would you mind you get, you get out of the way you're blocking turbo you're blocking the camera you're blocking you got to get out of here where's your ball turbo where's your ball where is it yeah go find a ball go find a toy good boy over there it's in the pool go get your ball Go get it. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, okay, you need me to go with you? Want me to hold your hand? Go get. <sighs> Seriously? That's a lot of water turbo. There we go. That will keep him busy for a long, long time. Because he can't get it in his mouth, so he just chases it around the pool. He kicks it all over. The you see it? Just look at it. Amazes me how long <laughs> that ball occupies him. Yeah, that's pretty good really holding it down. Sometimes he can get it out of the pool and then he kicks it around the patio. Are you gonna be able to do that, Turbs? You gonna get it out? Really likes to pin it down and wrestle it under the water. I love that he still goes after it because he knows that he can't get that in his mouth, that he can't get it out of the pool. Doesn't stop him, keeps trying. That'll probably keep him busy for a good maybe 30 minutes, hopefully, I don't know. It's been like five days of this. It might be getting old to him by now. Two plants. We'll go through the impatience first because I feel like that's probably the most obvious of everything that I grabbed. There are nine of the compact orange sun impatience, compact electric orange. And the sun impatience say compact on them. That usually means they'll get about 24 inches. Vigorous, I believe, go 24 to 36 inches, something like that, maybe 30 to 30. They get a lot bigger. And then there's the spreading, which are shorter and spread out. And I actually needed three more of these, but they didn't have three more that really looked quite as nice as these did. So I'm going to have to go back. I'll explain that some more later. And then we talked about the situation with the compact pinks and how the color was really throwing me off. And that's just something that happens in greenhouses sometimes and temperatures. There are all types of things that can influence the color on the flowers. But now that it's been a few days since I was there, you can see what's a little bit more true to how they should look. And that's what I wanted. This is more just the typical like, bubblegum pink. I think those will pair nicely with the orange. And then some of my favorites here. Oh, 
Don't you shake on me? Okay, all right. And then I grabbed several of the compact deep rose. This is one of my favorites of the Sun Impatience. They have a darker foliage on them, which I don't really care for. That's the only thing I don't like about them. It does look nice. It just doesn't blend well if you're trying to mix a lot of the colors together to have one type that has a much darker foliage than the rest. Usually if I'm changing up the color of something and I want a different color foliage, then I want a different shape, size, and texture as well to mix things up. But I like them so much that I don't really care about all that. It is absolutely impossible to get their color to come through on camera. I don't know if that help at all. Probably not. The sun's in my viewfinder, so I don't know if you can even see that. It's a coral pink. They tend to look more of an orange when I'm showing them on camera. I've tried multiple cameras to try and really get the vibrance of this flower, but it just doesn't come through. Regardless, they're beautiful, and I absolutely love them. And then I grabbed a flat of these back here, which are new. Haven't grown this one. Oh, wow, sat right in the shadow. That's great. Turn around. That's better. This is Compact Rose Glow. I think is the name on that one. Yeah, Compact Rose Glow. New to me anyways. Haven't seen them around at the nurseries before. It's a uh, kind of a fuchsia color. There's, it's lends itself more towards a red, a reddish pink. It might look red on camera. Again, I don't know. I can't see my viewfinders really just filming with my fingers crossed that everything is going to be in focus. You can kind of see back there some of the newer flowers are much more of a red tone and some of them have more of a magenta y pink tone. So this could be a case kind of like with the compact pink that are over there. That background noise is turbo jumping in the pool. If that's coming up in the audio, I don't even know. Where this could have had a different color in the greenhouse than what it's actually going to have when I have it out in the landscaping. So maybe I shouldn't have gotten six of them because they're looking pretty red. The newer flowers are really, they're looking red. And they were much more of a purplish tone, purpley pink tone at the greenhouse. It's also, it has been very unseasonably cool. Lows have been in the 40s, daytime temps in the 60s. I think, like, actually, I think the day this video comes out or the day before this video comes out, the warm front's supposed to move in. And I would imagine it's supposed to hopefully stay that way from then and on until fall. But you never know, right? Cooler temperatures can influence the flower size, shape, and color also. So I can't really say for sure what I got with these. But you get, why did I get six of them? I really like them. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Even if they do lend themselves to more of a red tone, I still like them a lot. It's not a sharp red. Does that make sense? A sharp, a good way to describe a color? It's not a red that's like a, like a fire truck or a cautionary red. It's like a smooth, tropical red also really should give the disclosure i'm shade blind like there are certain tones and colors with reds and pinks and a lot of blues and greens where i cannot decipher i cannot even the number of times i've had conversations with people about things that i thought were green and they're like no it's blue or something i thought was red and they're like no it's pink or vice versa i just you have to trust the camera as best as you can i have everything set to neutral on the just the color settings for everything so that hopefully they're coming out very true to how they look in person. Next up, these are some of my favorites. Scented a ton of these last year. These are the variegated Vigorous Tropical Orange Sun Impatience. The Vigorous 18 to 34 inches is what the tag said with 24 to 36 inch spread. I wish that they were all the Vigorous. They used to call them Landscape, but now they call them Vigorous. It'd be nice if they got bigger, but so you get plenty big as it is. The electric orange is just a variegated leaf on it with really nice big orange flowers on them. The last year in the pool planters that go around the pool, I combined the electric orange with the tropical, I think that's rose back there. It's the same thing, but it has a pink flower on it. And I really did like how that looked, but they were so incredibly slow to get going. You just blew dog air right into my ear. Felt very awkward, Turbo. I didn't like that. And the variegation on them is very loud. And I planted tons of them last year. And again, I really did like it, but it was a bit much. I want to tone it down this year and let the ones that are variegated have their own special spots where they really stand out. So I always have always in the past, at least the last several years, have put one of these trop. I can scoot over there. I'm sitting on the ground, so I have to just scoot my way over there. The compact tropical rose I have traditionally 
planted underneath my pygmy date palm and have always just loved the way that that looks. So I just got the one so I can keep doing that. I, you know, it's nice to mix some things up. There's some things where I'm like, it's just tradition at this point. I can't mix it up. The compact tropical rose, I will say the variegation on them is usually more abundant than on the uh, electric orange. With the orange, it's not that it's more abundant. It's more of a yellow on the electric orange and there's generally more color in the veining and that midrib that's in there you can maybe see it kind of sort of hopefully so you do get some more color and texture with the orange i think the orange does have much more of a wild tropical look to it than the tropical rose does that's why i just got the one tropical rose and then the two of the vigorous orange everything over here these are all in one gallons so these are a decent sized plant i think each one of these has two plants in them which i won't be dividing them up just going to let them do their thing 24 to 34 inches high and wide basically that's these will take up a good amount of space i just didn't think i needed very many it'd be nice to let the plants that are big and wild and crazy stand on their own instead of have them absolutely everywhere so those are all of the sun no 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 i also got the compact purple candy candy purple i already planted them have a look at those last because i already planted them and they're not they're not over here but I, I will try my best to remember to show them. Y'all saw them when we were at the nursery. I found some in larger containers. The ginger that's back here, I'm very excited about it. Don't, I don't know, it's just a ginger of some sort, some sort of costus, I would assume. It's not a gingerberg, so it's bloom out of the ground. I could maybe, I was gonna say maybe an alpinia preparata, but I highly, doubt it because the growth is so small and slender and the flower on there that's not typically what that would look like when it's starting out kind of it's just actually with that flower to open up i imagine it's just a regular costas one of just the red button gingers fun i really like those you also have the persian shields strobilanthes two of those back there getting closer you better look at them there they are and then a whole bunch of begonias these begonias are super freaking cool it's only been a few days and i am falling in love with these begonias there will probably be a dedicated video on them actually just because i think i think they're awesome and we need to talk about it some more the top hat begonias oh no four i i got the tomato i think y'all already knew that though didn't you yeah there's the hanging tomato at the start of the show i also grabbed two of the same variety of tomato which i already forgot what it was for y'all it's only been few minutes for me it's been a few days cherry cascade that's the name of that tomato i grabbed two of them in little i think they're two or three inch containers in case you want to throw them over the edge of some other pots the begonias look at these top hat begonias aren't these fantastic plants uh, i tried to get it at the right time of day i waited just for the sun to come through at the right angle to see if i'd be able to catch the shimmer on the flowers you can maybe see it if I move this around a little bit, might be able to see what I'm talking about. There's a glittery appeal here. Lots and lots of shimmer and sparkle. They look almost as if they've been coated in diamonds. The back of the flowers, a darker pink than the front. So this is how they look before they open up and then they unfold into this. Look at how, but that's a freaking big flower for a begonia. A very big flower. Top hat pink. That's this one, the pink one. Not a crazy name. You can tell, probably not proven winner's plants. These names are too easy to pair together with the plants. Top Hat Scarlet, back there, with reddish orange color. And then the last one is Top Hat Rose Bicolor, which is just a nice white flower with a pink outline. I don't see quite as much of that shimmeriness going on with the Rose Bicolor, but it still looks pretty cool. The Scarlet very sparkly so with all of these i grabbed two except for with the scarlet i was only able to find one of those they're in smaller containers than the ones that y'all saw at the uh, greenhouse i don't think i picked the camera up and updated on this i don't i really don't remember well originally that first one that i had seen and shown when i was in there was in a larger container it's like 25 bucks not a bad price considering how massive the plant was but then they have this neck size down for these hanging baskets, which are, they look like eight inch hanging baskets for $13. I'm like, okay, well, I can get two for $1 more. That makes more sense. And the other ones that were larger 
looked like they were hitting that begonia level where things were looking kind of flimsy, like they would probably break fairly easily. Whereas these are still smaller, not small, I think that $13 is a great price for how big these are, but they aren't so overgrown that if I <laughs> unpot them, which I'm going to be unpotting them and plant them into containers, they hopefully won't just break and fall to pieces. That can happen, you know, begonias, they tend to just snap. These are a little bit more squat, more sturdy, and I got twice as many. I couldn't pick a color, so by doing it this way, I was able to get one of everything. Top hats go part shade to full sun, and they get around 20 inches tall. Also, very large leaves. Look at the size of the leaf on this thing. That's, that's gigantic. A little bit too much. That's, I don't think that that's necessary. Fine, it's not hurting anything. It's just, it really stands out, which is okay because the flowers on these aren't like a regular begonia. The top hats have the biggest flowers of all of the begonias, which yeah, that's not even a very big one. This one, here's, where's a big one? Here we go. Nice, big flower, big, open flowered. Lots of texture on the inside with them as well. Think dragon's wing begonia, but a little bit smaller, more rounded leaves, and a much larger, more upright, open-faced flowers. So it's like kind of the same thing as far as growing them goes, but also not the same thing as far as physical characteristics are concerned, but kind of a little bit. Just begonia, right? Abundant bloomers, very, very heat tolerant, should be looking nice throughout the season. Haven't read anything on these about them having a tendency to rot out or anything of the sorts. I did also grab two of the rose by color in a smaller container just because those were the only ones I saw in the smaller containers because I would like to pop a couple of those in the ground and see how they compare growth wise. Like with the dragon's wing begonia, this one down here, it's got the cold and sun damage on it. These, you can get them in a little two inch container. It's no big deal. You throw them in the ground and they will be really big plants within several weeks. Same thing, you throw them into a container, several weeks, really nice big plant. Unlike, you know, the landscape type begonias that just little nubby things that stay little nubby things. And then now these top hats. And there are lots of variations off the dragon's wings. By the way, there's also the angel's wings and there's like the grand dragon wing that has a much larger leaf similar to this, but more pointy. All of those, pretty quick to take off, pretty sturdy in the garden. The top hats from what I'm gathering, pretty much the same thing. But what I wanna see is when I stick them in the ground, throw some into containers when they're in small sizes, more affordable sizes, should you wanna like mass plant these, how are they gonna do? So gonna be looking at that this year. I only grabbed two. I mentioned that I don't have enough of the sun impatience, so I'm gonna be going back, right? I have to, I need to get more sun impatience. More of the orange, that is. And that's because I planted up the hydrangea planters down on the other, let's go talk about it. Down there, I put three of those purple candy sun impatience in each one of those. And I was telling myself, hey Turbs, how you doing baby, you got some itchies? I was telling myself that I was okay with keeping those planters simple and just doing the one type of sun impatient in them, but I thought about it and uh, I'm not, I don't know what I was thinking, a large container. I'm never gonna keep those simple. I want lots of color in there. I just, I want that extra color. So uh, I need six of these to dedicate to those two planters, which means I only have three to work with for the landscape. That's four, isn't it? I meant to do this, I meant to do three. So over here, I can plant this area up and go pink, orange, pink, orange, pink, orange. But I wanted to take the sun impatience basically all the way around this landscaping this year. So I'm going to need a few more. Remember, they get pretty big. These will easily go 20, 24 inches wide. So I don't need that many more. I really think another four or five would probably be ample, but I don't, well, I don't have it. So I'll pop back over there sometime this week and grab those so that I can finish up the landscaping. I'm thinking in the morning, we'll go ahead and start planting up this front area. There are a few things that I'm I'm trying to iron out in my head because the Tradescanthia Nanooks are coming back from last year, which I wasn't expecting, but I'm glad because one of the reasons I planted them was because I wanted to see if they would be as hardy here as the Palettas are, and it turns out they are. But the clump that's coming up is also higher up than I would like. It's kind of right where I want to put the sun impatience, and it's been such a cool week with no rain and very little humidity. Nothing out here has grown this week, not noticeably anyways. The lows in the 40s and daytime temps in the 50s and 60s, they're just hanging out and holding still. So uh, my hopes had been that they would put on a little bit more growth, just, just a scotch more, and I could dig them up and move them forward. 
but they're just like tiny leaves sticking out. We can talk about that some more in the morning when it's time to get those things planted up right now. Just enjoying the begonias over here at the table. These flowers, they're so freaking big. I don't know how else to describe it. Like I said, though, there will probably be a dedicated video just on these, maybe, if it, unless it turns out I already said everything that needs to be said, which may have happened. I talked too much. I may have just ruined it. I have some more in-depth information to give, but I'll have to really look at that and see if it's enough to justify an entire video. I need to get these put away and then wait for a morning to come around, start popping some impatience in the ground. What are you gonna do, Tobes? You have to make a decision here. You're gonna go up or you're gonna come out? You just finished eating. Now he has to decide. You're gonna go upstairs and go hang out and have Toby time? Are you gonna come outside with me and Toby? Turbo, that's that's your name. Yeah, why not you come outside? We're gonna have fun out there, let's go. Come on, come on. I'm not gonna beg you. Maybe I will a little bit. Come on, Toby, come on. Hey, Pumpkin. Hi, Pumpkin, nice to see ya. You gonna do a big jump? Smell some things. Walk on the table, do some exploring. This is good. Oh, she's feeling so good today. She hadn't been feeling that great. Had to take her to the vet on Monday. Still waiting for, well, Tuesday. Still waiting for blood work. Uh, she just, I don't know, she wouldn't eat. Wouldn't eat for a couple days. This morning she's eating really well. All the labs they did while she was there were good. No diabetes, no UTIs, nothing. So hopefully it was just a stomach bug, but you know, just have to, Wait and see what's going on there. She is 11, so who knows? I'm just glad that this morning she ate. She ate a lot. She ate a lot of food. And I think technically I should probably go separate her into her own room so that if she throws up, I'll know about it and be able to like, you have to keep track of like their stools and everything. It stresses her out so much when I do that. Even just taking her to the vet, that alone can cause her to get sick. So I'm gonna leave her. She's acting fine. It's been over an hour since she ate and she's been running around and playing and following the other animals around. You seem to be feeling better, right, Pumpkin? Feeling good, Pumpkin? Yeah? Okay. I mean, y'all see her almost every single week. It seems about normal, right? Jumping around, hiding from the camera. It's, okay, you're gonna go up? Is that what you're gonna do, Toby? What are you doing? Turbo, Turbo, What? What? why? What's going on? Were you licking the floor or licking your paw? All right, I need to check his paw out. That's enough, good boy. Good boy, no more. No more paw, no, 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 no more paw. You're gonna have to get the cone. No more paw. He had a little cut on his paw a couple weeks ago. Every now and then he goes to town and starts licking it. You guys, you, just a handful. I checked it out. It's dried up and doesn't look infected. He just sometimes gets obsessive over it. Orchids are blooming. Nice color pairing too. That just worked out that way. Can I get in closer, maybe? Bang Day Beauty Sakura from uh, Norman's, I believe supposed to have just amazing huge displays of flowers on it this is its first grow since it got here so keep it fertilized with all the waterings and eventually hopefully it'll have some really big flower spikes on it and this one that doesn't come on camera come on it's auto do do it just focus for autofocus on these older sony cameras is such garbage look at that Isn't that beautiful fuller sunset one of my favorites had this one for a long time. It's a good bloomer. Almost always in bloom. Good girl, having some more water and some more food. Well, I was gonna go outside so we can get to work, but I'm gonna hang out with her. As long as she wants to eat and drink, I have to hang around her. I have to give her her food piece by piece. She won't eat out of the bowl. I have to like actually hand her her pieces of food. Don't, don't know why. There's also a napkin there because sometimes a flat surface, maybe she'll eat off of that, but nope. Nope, she wants me to throw it, so. That's what I'll do. Okay, you good? He's he's over the obsession with the paw. She's done eating and drinking. Gave her a little groom with the scissors, trimmed her pants up. Cosmo's good, pets are good. <laughs> Thank God. Hey, Colby. Oh, orange umbrella really adds an interesting cast to the colors out here. Does the pink look more pink? Nope, nope, that's not right. All right, here's where I'm at. I have this flat loaded up. I've already put out some of those sun impatiens. Every year I plant them over here in this spot, usually just do a row. Last year I did the variegated rows, the tropical rows in here, which was nice. But again, they just, they took a long time to get going and take off. So I wanna just go back to the regular sun impatiens this year, cause I know they're going to be more vigorous and this should be pretty nice looking by the time it's all done and planted up because I usually just start with tiny little 
like two inch pots. When I do this, this year I went much bigger. Instant gratification. It's not going to have to wait as long to start to see some nice looking color over here. But here's the, there's always something. When I had originally planned out the spot, I was going to do two rows of the Sun Impatience. One in the back and then one that's just the opposite of this one in the front. So you get like a checkerboard appearance with the colors there. Years past, I've put Tradescantia in the front here. And I thought, you know, I just won't do that this year. And just double up on the Impatience and just have a ton of color right here. But to my surprise, the Tradescantia are coming back. I have to decide if I want to dig them up and just get rid of them, or maybe just stick with a single row. If I leave them, I need to plant some more because only two of the Nanooks are coming up. One of the Pellettas, the purples back there, and I have a couple more Nanooks, so I could get that to fill back in. I'm just trying to decide. It does look nice having the Tradescantia in the front, but I thought it looked pretty neat. I, look at, so here would be the view coming out the door. Got to examine everything from all angles. Look out the window. Beautiful. Minus the window being dirty. Need to handle that. When you step outside, you'd be like, oh, oh, look, so much color. But there's already going to be a lot of color here just from that single roast. Maybe I'll just stick with that. Because I'm still going to get the extra payoff because of going with bigger plants this year. So they'll be bigger faster. Won't have to wait until what mid to late july for these to be all nice big and looking their best they'll sit still for a few weeks but they'll take off let's get quicker results this way yeah that's fine and then uh what i was going to do was down here i know things are there's stuff everywhere to get those pumps put back in the pool i was going to do a row of the rose glows in front here but i guess i'll just do the other orange and pink right here that's fine there's no reason i can't do that other than the eucamus which I need to move. They're just they're going over there in the corner. Be something that would be best to do in the fall. Huh. I might just say screw it and just plant the impatience in there with the eucamus. I can't take the row down as far as I would like to though because the bamboo's over here and I'm not digging this up until the new canes have fully opened up and hardened. They're pretty close. You can see back there there's only a few more that need to open up so I would say by the end of next week I should be able to go ahead and lift this clump and get it out of here and then I'll be able to have the row of sun impatience going from right here down to probably right around here. I'll swoop it up by this boxwood that's full of winter burn. It looks like garbage but I would like to plant these right now so that's that's my dilemma is I'm kind of just fighting myself with do I just do the whole be patient thing or just get on it. I don't know. I know what I should do. It just, it's not aligning with what I really want to do. But regardless, at least I can get the six planted over there by the Heptacodium. Two inch bit, four inch bit. That's not even going to be quite big enough. Got a vine wrapped up in there. Or do I shovel? Shovel would be less messy. I don't want to use the shovel. Gotta use the auger. Auger is way more fun. Okay, the auger may actually not be the right move here just because I dug one hole and it made a very big mess. Slightly off topic here, but Need to prune up the heptacodium while I'm thinking about it. Some dead wood, and I want this to be open down low, and I want it to get that nice vase shape to it, so I don't want it too weighted down, and any branches that are too wild off the side, though. No, I did it. I'm sorry. I got distracted. It happens. I get distracted easily. Don't know what else to say. Auger, it's just so much fun. It's kind of faster. It just really kicks things up and makes a mess. Slow release. These are such nice sized plants. And there's two inside each of these containers also. Oh, should I, no, don't do it. Was about to say maybe I should go in and divide them up, but I know better. Shouldn't do that, just leave them alone. So when you're buying larger plants, what you're paying for are, are roots, a nice established plant that will take off quicker and be more sturdy in the garden. So if I divide it up, I may as well have just bought smaller plants and smaller pots, right? Yeah, it would defeat the purpose dividing those up. And one thing I didn't talk about when I plant up this area, because it's a pretty unique shape, maybe set the tripod down before starting a little story time. Yeah, this whole spot in here, it is an awkward, well, it's not an awkward shape, but with annuals that grow very vigorously, I don't necessarily worry about making sure they're perfectly lined up or symmetrical. Main thing I'm looking at here is that the distance from where they're planted to the front of the bed stays the same. Otherwise, they can have a nice curve and a swoop. They're not identical or even plants, so there's just going to be some differences here. There's a Tritoscantia right where I need to stick 
this orange one. Correction, there was a traded scantia right where I needed to plant that. Really? Three holes, that's all I'm getting out of this? Come on, piece of crap. Good thing I had another one sitting in the base. I do appreciate the feedback I got a couple weeks ago when I was asking people for opinions on drills and drivers because I'm not super crazy about the DeWalt. I was really glad some of you had reminded me about Hitachi and Mikata. It's been such a long time since I did any shopping for drills that I wasn't sure. What is this? I don't, I, it's like a potato. It's a tuber of some kind. Don't know what it goes to. I don't, I have no idea. I'm putting it back where I found it. Or you know what, there's a random Peltandra in here and I bet that that is probably the tuber that that's developed over the years. Actually, I think it's a Peltandra. I can't say for sure. Oh, other thing, uh, this spot gets pretty wet so sometimes I'll plant these up just a smidge higher and then get the mulch placed around them just to help make sure to hold the moisture in for them. But it's important that the water does drain really well around those roots. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Peltandra. It's some random aeroid that I want to say I either got from Plant Delights or Brian's Botanicals maybe like 10 years ago. I can't find it in any of my order histories or anything like that, so I don't I don't know what it is. It was a nice looking tuber it had on it though, so hopefully it'll be a nice big plant when it comes up. Try and remember that the Nanook's right there, so you need to stay back little ways <laughs> wow even though i reminded myself that there's a tritiscantia right there still almost completely forgot about it and almost dug it up hit it i should say with the uh what was it the auger i feel like i should probably clean this up too since it's in the background and get the brown tips off of that needed to be done anyways and i'm down here with clippers so may as well do it right oh that looks nice there's a size difference pretty sure i talked about that between the orange ones and the pink ones but in a few weeks that will all even itself out yeah i don't know if i needed another row of them would have been cool lots of extra color but these are already so big that i don't i don't know if i would have even noticed really this is fine and now i'll have more continuity by doing the pink and orange down in that area where I just was. And I'm going to take a moment to figure out what I want to do there and come back. Okay, here's what I've come up with. I'm thinking, since the dilemma was not really the best time to move these a few weeks ago, would have been great. They're a good size now, these Eucomus, these pineapple lilies, the red things right here, if you didn't know what I was talking about, it's those. They're in my way. They need to be transplanted right over here or like right right up there but i'm waiting for the irrigation company to come out here to reattach the sprinkler line from over there to under here and it's right around this area where they have to do that they're probably going to have to dig this spot up so i'm thinking i'm just i'm just i'm just gonna dig them up it's fine it really should be fine they're still early enough in their start that any damage that is caused here is nothing that they shouldn't be able to rebound from it should be totally fine everything's fine does that get down deep enough that's a deep spade i would hope so lift up as many of them as i can they will probably divide as i do this which is totally fine that is very satisfying there we go look at that nice big bulbs you see them this is good this is still good timing this is what i wanted to see didn't want to split any of them up and that is a nice big healthy root. I think this actually worked out perfectly. Again, a couple weeks ago would have been more ideal, like right before those roots started going, but it's still early enough that this shouldn't do any serious damage to them, though it may have set them back by a few weeks. That's okay. These are nice, big, healthy looking bulbs on these. Don't you love that? You get all this from just one plant stuck in the ground who knows how long ago these are the sparkling burgundy i believe it's eucomus bicolor got these from plant delights i don't know when a long long time ago they become more common at the time that was pretty much the only place i knew of that sold them but i think you can get them just about everywhere now there we go and that's the very last one those were down very deep I'm assuming that's just because over the years this has gotten higher and higher and higher because of all the mulching. But you can look at how far down those were. 
from right around here all the way down there. That's a good fight. I doubt I'll be replanting them that deep. I don't even know if I have containers I could put. So now these need to go straight into a container, like right away. Last one. Not bad. This is just, it's going to have to work. Part of the plant is exposed. I really want all that white to be <laughs> buried, but here we are. I'd have to use 10 inch containers for that. I'm not spending that amount of money that would cost on the soil. No way, not happening. It'll be just fine like this. Ideally, this will only be for a week or two anyways. I haven't gotten a hold of the guy to find out when he's coming out here to get this stuff fixed, but it should be sooner than later. I'm gonna keep him in the part shade. I'll just let him get morning sun and make sure that the soil stays consistently moist. The, you saw how those bulbs came up. I think these look fine. I don't think there'll be any damage other than they might not be happy about not being buried properly but again it's just gonna have to get over it just the way it is one of my main objectives was to get as many of those sun impatience planted as possible to free up room on the patio and here i am planting more things that have to sit on the patio that's all right progress is progress this is good it needed to be done i've been talking about it for years and again it's only going to be for maybe a week or two at least i hope spindle pump's kind of thirsty looking too Need to add some soil into there. The wind keeps knocking it over and I keep forgetting to top that off. All right, those should be good. Just need to keep the sun off of them because, you know, they're very exposed with all the parts that used to be underground. And uh, what were we? Oh, sun impatience. Well, I'm just, I'm going to plant them. So I'll just cut back. You, you just saw what I do right there. I'm do the same thing over there. Yeah, I could only fit three of these over here for right now. So I'm not really sure why I made such a big deal about this project. Because, yeah, I can't, I, I, the bamboo's in the way. I forgot the drill was there. Got some water on it. Uh, yeah, until I can dig this up, I can't continue this down. I'm going to bring it to right around here. I would like for it, ideally, to extend to this sable palm right there. But I only have three more. So that's probably not going to happen. Let me think. I would do orange, pink, orange, pink. And I have two more oranges. And two. How many do I have left? Yeah, so I need four more. I have three. And as I was saying, I need to buy another few more oranges, right? So that's not a big deal. I have to get back out to the store anyways to pick up some more plants to finish this spot off. I need to move this out of the sun and get that into the shade because it's just frying over here. Yeah, won't that look nice? A nice swoop. Not really even a swoop. Kind of a swoop because the patio swoops, but of the sun impatience all the way down through there. Would that really be enough? One two three four and yeah, i probably need more like five more doesn't matter can't do it right now anyways i guess i could do this part no i should wait at least got something started here sooner they get in the ground the better to get nice growth out of them the forecast changed changed the forecast changed drastically it's supposed to be pretty nice from here and on not i think there might be like one more low in the 40s if even so i can start moving plants outside and doing a bunch of other things in a couple days I want to hold off a little bit longer because i don't always trust the forecast there's are the impatience i planted underneath these hydrangea trees right here and i'm not crazy about having it just with the purple see over there it's just purple a little bit of transplant shock because we had some chilly nights they'll be fine though I think that the purple and orange makes more sense because that's well, also what I have going on in the garden. We have more color over here. These are the ones, where's their tag? The Candy Mountain ones. There's a flower that's about to open up the purplish pink flower with a reddish pink, darker lines on the inside that go around the flower. It's a nice patterned flower. Sorry, they aren't looking better. So it would probably be nice to get to see what they look like, but y'all saw them at the nursery. Just like that but i got bigger ones to put in those containers haven't figured out the spiller situation yet because uh, just not there yet trying to do the projects as i can instead of planning too far ahead for them that well that way you don't have plants piling up quite as much some of these you have to wait for the big palm trees to get here the pineapple lilies, y'all know what's going on with those and then these right here oh well now i need more pink i have three orange left i need more i'm gonna <laughs> It's fine, doesn't matter. I have to go back and get some more regardless. I'll do my counting when it's time to do that. Yeah, I can't do it. I have to finish this project. Okay, you can't really tell. This place, packed. Like, overflowing, packed. 15 minutes just to get a parking spot. I guess we're already here, so I don't really need to film this, do I? Here we go. Four more orange, four more pink. I figure I should probably go ahead and grab another ginger while I'm here, right? Just because, you know, why not? No, I'll regret it if I only have one. I have two. 
Okay, now was there anything else here that I meant to get last time but didn't just because I didn't have space on the cart and I didn't feel like making another trip? I think there was. I remember what it was though. Creeping Jenny. That's what it was. We grab some Creeping Jenny, get home and get back to work. Huh. Look at that. It's a freaking boulder. That's what the shovel kept hitting. Glad to know. I was really having some issues getting this thing up and out of the ground. Oh, I decided to take the bamboo out. Probably figured that out from the shovel and the lifted root ball. Didn't see a reason to film all that much while I was back at the nursery because, you know, you're just there in the video. Been a week for me, several minutes for y'all. The bamboo, it's just, I, I, it's one of those things, I just had to get it done. I couldn't put it off any longer. It just has to go. Or not go, it needs to move. It needs to go back there, back where it belongs. Dug it out as deep as I can. Their roots typically aren't very shallow. Moving bamboo when it's not very big, pretty easy task. Main thing is just going to be to make sure that it stays moist at all times back there, which is... Well, it's interesting timing since I don't have irrigation up and running in this bed, but... You know, whatever. I have to water anyways because I'm putting the impatience over here. I'm not as focused on getting the entire clump as I was when I first started this just because... The, this root ball from there to there, I think that that's just a bit too much. But this part right here, that should be... Well, maybe I loosened it up enough to get the whole thing. Almost. Not quite. Need to make one more cut over there. Okay. There we go. Not too bad. Decent sized root ball. I could easily divide this up into three. But I don't... Why would... I'm not going to do that. Don't know why I would. I guess if I wanted to spread it out more, I could have one clump here and one clump over there, one clump down there, and it would fill in more quick not really bamboo grows so quickly once it gets going i think that that would be completely unnecessary i'm putting it back here by the house i have this blue pot over here i'm gonna zoom in there that was it could you see it i wanted to put bamboo in there but the black bamboo i don't think would be a great idea one because it's a zone seven they're they don't do great below five degrees and uh, they like sun or part shade really part sun so that just probably not smart place to put it underneath the tree it's gonna be pretty shady there uh there are some fargasias some uh, of the clumping bamboos that i think would do better in that location i just always have trouble finding them for sale at a nice big size but that would be i think the smarter way to go things are more cold hardy and can take the shade i need to put i have to set the camera down now I don't have a tripod that works over here with my mic, so we just come right back. So much better, right? Makes much more sense back there against the side of the house instead of up here in front of the garden bed. I, oh, I'm so glad I'm not gonna have to tell this story anymore. Every time I give a garden tour, I have to explain why that massive clump is in the front of the garden bed. Used to be down there, spread over here, the clump was over there, died off. Had to let this grow out till it got big enough to dig up. It's not big enough to dig up. So I did, now we're up to date, now it's back there. I feel like a three or maybe even five years I've been waiting to do that. Feels good, I'm glad to have that done and to have moved those eucamus. I've wanted to open the front of this bed up again for such a long time and now there's still some shoots left but those new shoots, they just, you just, just spay them just like that, boom, 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 super easy. Not that hard to control them as long as you do it in a timely fashion. You have like a few weeks when they start coming up, usually before they start to get too hard to just hit with a spade, at least when they're smaller like this. Now, what? Oh yeah, I can finish this now. Finally. Okay, looking forward to that. All right, feeling pretty good about this. Look at that, see? It's exactly what I had in mind. Starts over here, flows down, cuts off a little bit, walk past some stuff that I need to put away, but I'm using, so don't really need to, then keeps going. In total, I think there were 15 or 16 thrown in the ground. These will all go. I already read the dimensions, right? About 24 by 24. I feel like they usually get more like 30 by 30, so these will grow in together nicely. It's hard to tell there's a curve in here. I need to shovel the gravel back, and I tried to maintain that distance, but I did have to bring it further forward when I got more into this direction just because of all the stuff that's planted right here. The rocks and sable miners, those are closer than my starting point down there, and I didn't want that to be any closer because of the irrigation line. So I try to bring it forward and have it kind of go up and curve a little bit when they're all at their max out size or even double this size, that really probably won't even be necessary. So it's just, that's just me overthinking things. Firstly, overthinking things all in all, very happy with this. This is something I've wanted to do for a very, very, very long time. I used to do sun impatience right here for years and then the bananas got really big and then the bamboo was there and it just didn't make sense anymore and with the eucamus over there so i stopped but well here we are 
I've now solved those problems. I have my border back and there will be lots of fun things going on in there. Those Eucomus that I pulled up, I think there were seven of them, maybe something like that. I want those to go in a line starting from right around here all the way down. Just a whole nice row of that dark scarlet, more of a crimson red behind that blue with the big pineapple-like flowers on them. I think that that'll look really pretty. I think I have more than enough to do that and maybe a row back here. I've always wanted to have a row of Eucomus basically right where I put these impatience, so I'll have to move the impatience if I do this. I'd have a row of them right in the front here. But also, I don't, I just don't know about the sunlight. I feel like I'm gonna have the same problem right here as I was having with where they are. The nice about having them where I just showed you where I would like to put them is they'll get the morning and afternoon sun because the house isn't blocking it, but just moving over a few feet to where they were, they were getting blocked. And over here, they're pretty much just going to get afternoon sun. For the most part, everything that's over here grows really well. It's just more towards September-ish that things start to get more tricky. Like this hibiscus that's in there, it got pretty shaded by the time it was late August into September. And uh, so, that, so that's not going to work there. Actually, I need to move that. The Eucomus, probably not a great idea for this spot. It's fine. They'll be great just having a row of them over there. I might plop one in the ground over here just to see how it does. And I can divide them up again next year and put a whole row of them back there behind the sun impatience if I wanted to. Time will tell. Now, this is done. Got lots of cleanup to do out here. Lots of just debris and junk and... Host, I mean, you can see it. Probably not something to harp on. You get the point. There's a mess out here. Need a decent dent in the impatience. Not quite the dent I was hoping for, but that's okay. Really, I only have two extras, two pink leftovers. The other oranges are going to go in those hydrangea planters. So all that's going to be left are these over here and those to the side. Yeah, made a lot of progress. I have less space than I did when I started because of all of these over here, but that's okay. This worked out nicely. Remember I was saying that I was going to do those rose glow sun and patience down there and do the pink and orange pink and orange over here but I was going to double up on it I think that was definitely the better move right I don't know why I was thinking to do something completely different over there from right here this way everything flows cohesively together and I have the other ones left to go ahead and accent things with and I have a few extras to use for some other people's houses too some other projects this though that's going to be so pretty and remember the impatience go now from here sun and patience from here all the way down over into this bed and all the way around. About a month from now, from right here all the way down, should have a total view of just color. Tons and tons of color from those impatience. And then come July, the hydrangeas will be blooming and those will be all bloomed out. This is gonna look great. Really, really well, especially once I get all this stuff put away over here. I have to leave those pumps out because of these grackle birds. They're black birds that hang out around pools and they bag their poop up and drop it in the water. They show up around March. They only start doing that poop thing basically now. They started a couple days ago, hence the color of the water. I just put a whole bunch of stuff in there to help sanitize it. But it's when they start nesting. It's their baby's poop. They bag it up and drop it. It's just, it's disgusting. I'm not a fan of those birds. When I put the pumps in the middle of the pool, that extra noise, it seems to deter them from dropping the poop in the water and they miss and drop it on the edge of the pool, which I prefer because I can at least rinse that off into the gardens. Why I still have all my pump equipment, everything sitting over there because I was thinking I should probably get that put back into the pool. I'm also curious to see if with the orange umbrella, if they'll stop throwing their turds at me when I'm sitting at the table. I talked about this last year with the blue umbrellas, they fly over and they drop their po I think that maybe they were dropping their poops over there where people are sitting because they see that blue dot and just go, oh, well, blue and blue and they're just dropping it thinking that that's water. But they haven't been doing that with the orange, so I'd say maybe they won't be dropping poop on me this year. That's nice. Always nice to be able to be outside without having bird turds flung at you from the sky every five minutes. I can't, I really, I cannot even express how happy I am <laughs> to have done all of this. It doesn't seem like a big deal probably to y'all, but there were multiple things in the way that I've wanted to do for a long time that I just hadn't been able to get to or I would remember that I needed to do them at the wrong time. This was a good timing to get all of those things done. And now, next week I can focus on this. Got a lot of cleaning to do, a couple planters that I wanna get done next week. It's supposed to be a really gross week. Forecast could change pretty drastically, who knows, but it's not looking like I'm gonna be able to spend a ton of time outside, so probably gonna hit some more nurseries because I have to pick up some stuff for fill y'all in on that later. Finally found the box that this came in so I can get that put away. 
And uh, yeah, get the fountain set up, probably get the tie moved out here and some more of the house plants. I don't want to move too many out though, because I need to make some more progress with getting some of these annuals planted, which means I need to get these apple trees planted, which means I need to go buy the arbs. I went by Home Depot the other day and they didn't have the ones that I wanted, so I might have to do some searching and some shopping, which, I don't know, that could be fun. Getting them planted will not be fun. The ground up there sucks. Really sucks. Like digging in cement up there. It's going to take probably a full day just to get a few things planted up there, but in the long run, it will be well worth it. I think that's where things need to end because I still have to get this thing edited and uh, make time to get some other things done. Oh, Pumpkin, I talked to the vet. Her blood work's good, so I think she just had an upset stomach. I'm going to keep an eye on her. They said if things keep going on to bring her back in and they'll do some scans and look for like possible inflammation, some other causes, but she's pretty good today, so hopefully it'll stay that way. Hopefully just a bug. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out for all the chaos. Got to see the nursery again. It's always fun going there. Lots of new plants. Really loving these gingers back here. Hopefully the heat that's rolling in today and hopefully from this point forward we'll get these to start blooming some more and I can get those planted up and just it's time. It's time to just start having fun with the plants. Finally, this is a long, long winter. October 15th to like today, basically. It has not been great outside. And in a few weeks the palm trees will be here too. That's great. That's another reason I have so many annuals over here. I do have some reserved for the palm trees. I didn't plan ahead for them like I do in years past where I'll buy a whole bunch of things and be like, I have to hold on to these until the palm trees get here. I'm waiting for them to get here before I plant most of them up this year, but a few of those sun impatients, yeah, I already told you about like the variegated one that's over there, goes underneath the date palm, those sorts of things. Yeah, comment down below, say hi. What's going on in your gardens? Getting some spring planting done? Starting to warm up, hopefully. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. That was, it, well, it looked beautiful yesterday. <laughs> Dried up now. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.